Good afternoon, everyone. All right, I know some people are still coming in, but I want to go ahead and get started and um, go in with our presentation this afternoon. Um, first of all, I'm Katie. I'm the general manager at ADAC, and I want to thank everyone for being here with, this, with us this week for Discover ADAC. It's been a really fun um, fall market. Um, we've had lots of fun seeing all of our friendly um, faces this week. So um, just a quick reminder, uh, we do have, uh, after today's panel presentation and reception, we have one more event this afternoon. Um, so that's in your event guide, so pick up a copy. Um, remember also to have some fun with us on social media, like I've been telling you all week. We've loved seeing everybody's pictures and videos. Um, be sure to tag us at ADAC Atlanta and use our hashtag DiscoverADAC. Um, and we'll make sure that we are reposting all of your stories and um, having some fun with you as well. Um, I want to thank Muso Design Group. They de designed our stage this market with something new we decided to do, and it looks really great in all of the photos. Um, so thank you to the, to the team at Muso Design Group. Uh, they sourced all of the product on stage from our showrooms at ADAC, and if you have any questions about any of the items, we do have a source list in the back of the room, so go check that out. Um, I want to thank our showroom sponsor today, that's Pierre Frey and Benjamin Moore in partnership with Pierre Frey. Um, so thank you so much for bringing this lovely panel to us today. Remember that we're going to go upstairs for a reception after the panel in Pierre Frey at Suite 308. And then, of course, I want to thank our media sponsor today, that's Atlanta Homes and Lifestyles. I don't need to say anything more. They are amazing. They are um, really, they help us every single day at ADAC. We do so many events with them throughout the year. Um, and so we are so grateful to have such a great partnership with them. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Lauren Iverson, who's the Editor-in-Chief at Atlanta Homes and Lifestyles. Thank you, Katie. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Awesome, okay. Thank you, uh, Pierre Frey and Benjamin Moore for having us all here today. We have a really great conversation lined up with our expert panelists here on color, which seems to be the hot topic of the year. Um, so I want to introduce who we have here today. First, we have Meredith McBrarity. Meredith is a sought-after Atlanta interior designer with a passion for creating beautiful and functional spaces that reflect our clients' unique lifestyles and personalities. With over 15 years of experience in the industry, Meredith has established herself as a leading designer with a keen eye for detail and a talent for blending classic and contemporary elements to create timeless and elegant interiors. Welcome, <coughs> Meredith. Thank you. Next, we have Melanie Milner of the Design Atelier. Opened in 1993, happy 30th anniversary, right? Thank you. The Design Atelier is known for curating timeless interiors that capture the authentic spirit of her clientele, resulting in welcoming and livable environments. Melanie has earned a reputation for refined and beautiful interiors that focus on the comfort of home without compromising timeless style, and she continues to attract a loyal clientele who count on her synthesis of rich materials, beautiful color palettes, and unique expressive interiors. And Melanie actually just won a Shutzi Award, so congratulations <laughs> on that as well. Thank you. Deal to have her on her panel today. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we have David Frazier. David is an architectural and interior designer with a design aesthetic formed in his beloved South and honed in his adopted home of New York City, which he just flew in very late last night, so thank you for being here. <laughs> That's where he now operates his eponymous firm, and with a discerning eye for detail and a firm belief in the importance of place-based architecture, David specializes in creating interiors that are reflective of his clients and their lifestyles with an emphasis on warm modernism. So welcome to all of our panelists. We're so excited to have you all here today. Um, let's jump right in. Uh, so I'm really excited about this discussion today because bright and bold palettes, as long with you know the more subdued color, is really having its moment these days. Um, I don't know if it was the COVID years where we're all kind of stuck in our house and we're like, we really need to liven up what's around us or what, but it's something that you're seeing more and more colors back and here to say, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, but that said, it can also be really daunting, I feel like, for a lot of people, myself especially, to start to infuse more powerful palettes into your home. It's a really big commitment, and um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm in a weird like, situation with them, like, if you come on too strong, you're gonna run the other way. <laughs> commitment issues with color, whatever it may be. But I'd like to start just by kind of going back a little bit and seeing what, your, what drew you guys to color in the first place and kind of when you started to use it in your work to complement the more like, natural layered textures that you already have the, um, each project. So, Meredith, do you wanna start? Sure. Um, so right out of college, I worked in Washington, D.C. for a very high-end design firm, and 
my boss was Puerto Rican. So we were exposed to really contemporary, a lot of color in the Caribbean and all around there, and also Washington, which is typically pretty traditional. But they're not afraid to use color. They don't really do black and white much there. So probably I've used it from the beginning. Just that's, that's kind of what I was exposed to, and I've sort of carried it on. But then I've, of course, developed my own way. But I don't think I've ever really probably been afraid to use it. I've just mm -hmm. I've probably dipped in and out of how I use it, though, over the years. Absolutely. So. What about you, Melanie? Where, where did your affinity start? Well, I think it just starts with um, the clients, you know, if they're open to color. And sometimes they they have a home that they've already um, have color palette that they we have to work with. So I, we had a client probably 10 years ago that she bought this house and had a blue LaConche range. And she was like, I hate blue. <laughs> I'm like, well, we're stuck with this. And so we're, we're going to have to figure out how to work with it. And so we really use that. Um, to find a sense of that love for blue um, that she didn't think she had. And the way we pulled everything else together around it and um, brought in some neutrals and some other colors, she learned to love um, that color blue. And now she's got another room in the house that is um, floor to ceiling blue. So I think it's oh just a matter of how you use it and um, you know, how you pull it together. She needed help dipping her toes into the water a little yeah. bit. She was, so. she was scared of it at right. first, but then we, uh, we figured out how to make it work. Absolutely. David, where did yours start? So mine was kind of, I guess I'm a little bit of a light bloomer with color. <laughs> um, so my background, my education, and um, my first job in New York was in a, primarily working in architecture. And so, you know, I think in general, architects are not really, they don't use color very often. Um, and so I was hired by a good friend and client, uh, and she loves color and loves pattern. And I think because we were so close, our relationship, you know, she pushed me and I pushed her, and um, that was really our first use of kind of strong color and pattern and, um, you know, really embraced it. And we've kind of, you know, it changed really the way that we approach projects and the way that we, you know, approach our work. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, there seems like there's such a um, detachment happening from the classic all white interiors going on in the neutrals to really include all of these really bold and powerful palettes. So uh, I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into that and learn a little bit more about what your personal um, draw is to certain color schemes. Like, what do you say that you tend to lean towards when you're doing your own schemes with color. Um, Melanie, do you want to start? Is it purple or something? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. For the um, I think it's just really kind of digging deeper and understanding, you know, what makes you happy. Uh, certain rooms, um, you know, colors do have an effect on your, your mood. And so I think when you want to experience an interior, like how do you want to feel when you walk into a room? Do you want to feel warm and cozy? Do you want to feel bright and happy? So you really want to put all these things together in a way that's meaningful mm -hmm. and, um, you know, an experiment. So the only way to feel confident about using color is to use it. So I think it's just a matter of taking that step and taking some risks. Absolutely. Meredith, what are some of your favorite palettes? And can you think of any times where maybe you've used them in an unexpected or memorable way, I suppose? Um, well, like Melanie, I do think it's pretty client specific yeah. and, and kind of what, um, c because my goal is always, you know, you live there, I don't. So I want you to feel really comfortable when you walk in this in this house and like it, it needs to be a reflection of you. So. I mean, gosh, we just we just did this butler's pantry, the whole entire thing, in this like aubergine purple color. It's wow. totally crazy. And then right down the hall are those Gucci pink <laughs> herons. That was a design crisis in itself to get them from. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other story. But <laughs> um, but you know, I'm I'm not afraid. And sometimes um, you know, and it may sound counterintuitive, like if you're scared of a color, if you just paint the entire room the same color, mm -hmm. it almost turns into a neutral, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. You know, you just kind of, just go for it. Um, like Melanie said, you just just go. And by the way, it's paint. So mm -hmm. if, if you really hate it, you can change it. But um, but as far as my personal, I, I, it's all kind of all over the place and by room and more specific that way, I guess. So, so Meredith's 
personal house is actually playing on the slideshow, if you see some of those, so maybe that can give a little more, um, I guess, look into what, what you're drawn mm. to personally as well. It's the one with the blue chair, it's the living room there, and I think there's some yellow going on as well. So, um, David, tell us about your favorite palettes. Is there anything that's coming to mind that you're like, oh, this is new to me or something that I'm more drawn to lately? Yeah, I think, you know, for us in our work and, and like, like, you know, Melanie and Meredith said, um, you know, we really look at where the project's located, the client's lifestyles, what their personalities are. And I think a lot of times clients can't really articulate what they're drawn to, but we try to pick up on, you know, how they live or, or you know, just the way that you know, their lifestyle works um, and their personality and how they present themselves to, to gauge, you know, what we think is going to be the best reflection of them and how they are going to enjoy, you know, kind of living with color. Um, but, you know, I think one of the more meaningful things or projects um, that we have done um, was a client had this really strong memory of her grandmother's house that had Zubair wallpaper in the entry hall, entrance hall. And so when we started the project, that was one thing that she really wanted to have in her um, in her house so that was kind of the starting point in in the whole kind of project this palette was originated from that you know kind of iconic classic Zubair you know wallpaper mm -hmm. um, so I think you know we're always trying to find some sort of meaning whether it's real or imagined <laughs> um, mm -hmm. to make decisions and to inform our palettes absolutely well that kind of brings up a good topic I suppose is that you guys are saying, you know, it's about the client and it's about creating a space that feels like it's a representation of themselves. It's the goal as a designer always. So what does your approach look like as you're working with a client who maybe they love color and they want to paint every room in their house or maybe they're just trying to dip their toes? How do you kind of pull that out of them to figure out what their goal is for their house um, and what they're maybe wanting and their, their sense of comfortability with that? Melanie, do you want to start with telling yeah. us how you go about that? Well, I think it's, you know, transitioning between rooms. Um, sometimes darker colors can compress a space. So I think it's important to think about not just necessarily the color, but how the hues work together. And you really just want that continu continuity between rooms as you flow through a house. And you want it all to, to feel like it's, um, you know, thoughtful rather than just picking out a random color for each room. You really want to see how it all works together and it, it always ends up in a way to, it's about the global feeling in the house rather than just um, compartmentalizing. Absolutely, and I've noticed, so in one of these slides you have a couple of spaces that it's a bar and maybe a mudroom area that are swathed in, um, <coughs> bright color that are really beautiful. And do you mm -hmm. find that you tend to do those smaller spaces and in that powerful, impactful color? Yeah. Or does it vary? Yeah, the smaller spaces, it's easier because uh -huh. you're not in them for very long. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that's another way to, where you can compress a, a smaller space. Um, and it, it just allows those brighter, bigger rooms to, yeah. to be the star of the show. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. David, what about you? When you're approaching clients and they're, they're maybe a little wary of how much they want to use color, or maybe they're really excited about it, what's your approach on working with them? Um, how do you approach these uses of color? I think, you know, for us, it's all about refinement. Um, and, you know, whether they are really drawn to color or not drawn to color, um, I think it's about, you know, being really, for, for us and in our work, it's about being really intentional mm -hmm. um, with the use of color and and how, you know, how it's woven throughout the house and how, you know, things overlap one another. Um, because I think as people nowadays, we um, are inundated with so much kind of sensory overload. So I think even with being intentional about the introduction of pattern and color, um, it can still be restful and, you know, and be calming. And so I think that's something that we always try to be um, really thoughtful of. Definitely. Yeah. Meredith, how about you? 
when you're when you're working with clients, what are you looking at? What are you um, trying to find about them? Are you sitting down with them and asking them about their favorite things to pull this out of them, or what's your approach look like? Yeah, usually when we start, I just say the whole point at the big, very beginning is to really get to know them and, yeah. and their personality and their like their style dating. and their it, it, totally. Yeah. <laughs> and I say just blow me up, like mm -hmm. blow me up with images, <laughs> Pinterest, email, text me, whatever is the easiest thing for mm -hmm. you because that helps me start to learn what they love, what they're yeah. responding to, and the things that they're like connecting with. Um, but And then it's our job, because a lot of them are really scatterbrained and like, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, they're, or they're like, I like that, but I don't know why, and I don't know how to pinpoint. So, you know, that's why we come in and we, we kind of help make it a more cohesive um, thing. But another thing, like Melanie said, I sort of love it when you can like take the chair out of that room and stick it in this room mm -hmm. and like everything and it doesn't mean it's matchy matchy by any means, but there is a continuity to the to the flow of the interior. And um, mm -hmm. so, really, I just and a lot of times it's funny. Clients' homes are sort of like how they dress. Oh, really? <laughs> I figured this mm -hmm. out. Like I have this one client who wears all black. Like her entire closet closet is black and white, and and her home is very monochromatic like mm -hmm. that. And and it, but it's like a reflection of her, and that's obviously what she feels comfortable in because mm -hmm. that's what she wears every day. And um, and then I have another client from Florida who's like boho chic and her house is super laid back and when she hired me she said I want to be barefoot I want to be like <laughs> that's how we roll that we're like kids in the pool and pizza box over here and so you want it to feel like really comfortable yeah. for them so getting to know them I guess like Absolutely. speed dating like mm -hmm. speed dating yeah. mm -hmm. everyone's favorite Just like I'm you sure. said. yeah yeah um, now you said something earlier that I want to talk more about you said when you paint an entire room the same color almost turns into a neutral. And I feel like we're starting to see a lot more of that lately. You know, you've got your blushes, your navies, your mustards, your olive greens maybe that are showing themselves and starting to appear more as neutral colors. Um, so what's your guys' take on this? How can you make these neutral toned palettes m live in this colorful way? Are you adding textures? Um, what, what is it for you guys? David, do you wanna start? Sure, um, I think, you know, I think for us it's, you know, we typically will start with either a pattern or some sort of art that's meaningful for our client. You know, something that we can draw from um, in order to inform the palette. And I think, you know, again, I'm, it's a, for, for us it's all about that intentionality and I think as long as you have that, um, then it does make sense and it doesn't feel you know, too busy or, you know, it, it, it can be really um, approachable. Um, so I think, you know, that's what, um, you know, as we're in, as we're kind of folding in more color and mm -hmm. we are seeing more colors that maybe in the past 10 or 15 years um, were not used that often. Um, I think that's how they're coming back in and being um, treated as, you know, as more neutrals or more you know, I think we're getting more comfortable with them and getting our clients more comfortable with them. Definitely. Well, you said that you were a late bloomer to the to the color yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you have a bedroom in here that is completely painted in, is it navy blue or? It's, um, is it yeah, black it's like a, or It's actually gray, a green, like a green, green black, yeah. Tell yeah. us about that space a little bit. Did your clients, were they interested in <laughs> having that completely covered? Were you like, okay, I don't know about this. So that was an easy, or maybe actually a really difficult client. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> it, was, it was for, it's my apartment oh. in the city. Oh. <laughs> so maybe the most difficult client. Um, and so it's a pre-war apartment in the uh -huh. city. Um, and, you know, we get a lot of questions about that room, like how we achieved the paint finish. And um, it, you know, as a pre-war apartment, um, it's really just kind of broken down plaster that's been patched over and over again. <laughs> and um, our painter that we used actually got the sheen wrong, but it turned out really, really great. And, um, you know, so it was a big, you know, it's kind of like my own house or designers own houses, I think are a lot of times um, experimental in ways of, you know, testing out yeah. things that maybe clients would be a little bit hesitant to do. So, yeah, that's how we you're got You're a little more through. fearless mm -hmm. in that sense. Yeah. You can show, hey, yeah. look at it here, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I love it. Is that it? And no, that's not okay. it. That's actually a, a, There's a another different one. one. Yeah. See, he's not scared of color at all. Yeah. <laughs> There's two examples in there. Uh, Melanie, what about you? Well, I think, you know, the environment is also something to consider. You know, if you're at the lake, you're, if you have a house at the lake, or if you're 
in a wooded environment, those colors will speak to the, the exterior. So I think there's a lot of considerations too with what's um, surrounding a home to bring the indoor and outdoor connection. Mm -hmm. So that's just something that's always on my mind when we're working in a project, if it's in the city or if it's in the country, if it's in the, on the water, those, those colors tend to infuse in, into the interior. Absolutely, and then you also have a kitchen in here that I wanted to talk a little bit about that is completely covered in this gorgeous, rich blue mm -hmm. tone. And can you tell us a little bit about that project? And it, it, it's not a neutral, but it does, like you said, it's covered in it that it almost reads a bit like a neutral, and I'd love to just hear your thought process behind it. Well, so that's, that's a pied de terre here in, in Atlanta, and the clients, you know, they have this big, beautiful, um, bright salon, and they wanted a kitchen that was, you know, they could have parties, and then they could have it catered, and it, they didn't really want it to be um, as prevalent in the salon. And so they found, we found this stone, and they wanted to incorporate blue, mm -hmm. but we didn't plan to have the whole thing painted blue. And I was standing there one day and I was like, you know, this kitchen just really needs to kind of go off into the distance. Mm -hmm. And I said, we just need to paint the ceilings, the walls, everything, the cabinets, just the same color, like you were saying. And that way it will recede, it will kind of, you know, not take away from the, the brightness of the salon. And so they were really nervous about it, <laughs> um, but they took a leap of faith and they, they went along with it and uh, it turned out really well and she, they, they love it now. Um, but it, it works because when, you, when you're in the salon and you're standing there looking out on Peachtree, um, you really don't see, you see this kind of like dark room in the distance and it just kind of recedes back in there. And they also have these uh, sliding doors that, panels that close off the kitchen as well. Absolutely, so it can have both moments then. It can mm -hmm. be quiet and subdued, it can be bold and beautiful, it can yep. choose what it wants for that day, it's exactly. amazing. Meredith, how about you? I know that you kind of brought it up a little bit, but if you're swathing um, a room in the same color, I suppose, like how are you accessorizing that or filling that space so that the color, it doesn't feel like it's clashing, you know, with other prints or um, things like that? What's your approach in that sense? Well, and to further explain, the reason I say it's a neutral, if you imagine painting your, your walls navy blue, but you keep all your trim and your windows white, that blue is really gonna kind of scream at you because it's the contrast of the white. But if you just paint all of it, the crown molding, the faceboards, the trim, the, then all of a sudden it just really, it almost kind of all disappears. So that's sort of like that room right there um, is exactly the point. So. Um, and again, what that does is just create this envelope that you could, I mean, you can create your whole scheme around then. But but now the back has, even no matter what color, whether it's this color or, or black or forest green or whatever it is, it just kind of creates this cocoon and then you can do whatever mm -hmm. you want. And then a lot of times if you want to just stick, you could also just stick to one color palette, but change the textures mm -hmm. and the, you know, the finishes. You can do linens and velvets mm -hmm. and nubby, um, bouquets and things like that. And that's another way you can really add interest without going crazy if you're scared of color Definitely. too much. So. I love it. Well, all of the panelists here, they've spent time all over the country working. I mean, David's located obviously in New York, but has lived in the South before. Melanie kind of splits her time and Meredith has projects all over as well. So I want to learn a little bit more about what the different regions are doing and what you're seeing in different areas. Um, can you tell us what the top palettes you're seeing being used, maybe in the Northeast compared to the South? And um, is there anything that surprises you in those? Or what are you feeling about that? David, do you want to start? Tell us a little bit about the Northeast and maybe comparing it to other projects around the country you have. Yeah, I think, you know, for us, um, you know, we, we are, are always try to be, you know, somewhat informed by um, the location of the project. Um, I think the way people in the Northeast tend to live um, is it's a little bit less frills um, and a little bit maybe less formal um, than, than our typical Southern clients that we work with or that, you know, or in the way that I grew up. Um, and, and I think it's really, that's probably the main difference. I think in general, um, the palettes are probably pretty similar. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe they're 
there's a little bit more pattern, um, you know, for our southeastern clients, um, and a little less, you know, a little bit more subtlety um, for our north northeastern clients. And we have a lot of work out in Colorado, um, and you know, I think there because the um, you know, it's such a beautiful kind of landscape. I think it's it's one that's kind of hard to compete with. Mm -hmm. So those, you know, when we're usually approaching projects out there, um, they're much more kind of neutral and hushed, but with, you know, lots of like textures and, and you know, we achieve that kind of um, layered palette through yeah. through those, you know, through the materiality versus maybe the color and the, um, and the pattern. Absolutely, big windows, lots of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Show all the mm -hmm. great yeah. stuff going yeah. on outside. <laughs> Melanie, how about you? What are you seeing different? I know that you spend a lot of time up north as well, mm -hmm. as well as everywhere else, so what's your? Well, I mean, in Maine, which is where I have my little cottage, um, I just painted the exterior trim, uh, kind of a mossy green, Ooh. and it was a little different. It would be a little more difficult to do that here, but up there, um, again, it's it's really understanding the landscape and the surroundings because, you know, the color palettes in a lot of the homes up there are greens and blues, but just, you know, really the colors from the exterior kind of it are infused on the interior. And so I think it depends on what the projects are. You yeah. know, we really do try to bring in the landscapes um, into the color palette and whether or not they want to accept the color or not. What are you using right now in your in your cottage? Is there anything oh <laughs> special in there that? Yes, I have a lot of you? greens, like Green. muted, um, deep greens, and you know that pine, um, those pine trees up in Maine. They're all the silvery blue green, and it's just it changes um, throughout the seasons. And so, I've infused a lot of those greens in the house, and then. My personal bedroom, I've never had a yellow bedroom, but I wanted to be able to go up there in the winter when it's really gray and dreary, and I just wanted to have a happy bedroom. So I, I used like a soft yellow. And yellows are actually one of the most difficult colors to use in a room because of the way uh, sunlight refracts the light. So you could pick something off of a color chart, and it could seem like a beautiful yellow, but if you paint it in a room that really gets a lot of natural light and the way the sun hits it, it could turn like bright yellow. So you really do have to do your due diligence when you're picking um, yellow especially. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I had a beautiful yellow bedroom growing up and then I painted it red and yellow. Uh, no, red <laughs> and blue, red and blue. So I could have used some of these tips back in the day, <laughs> clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, Meredith, you have work all over as well. Are you seeing anything that's surprising you in terms of color and how people are applying it or what they're asking for? Maybe they're going back to the, I know colored appliances are starting to pop up more. Um, I don't know if you're seeing anything in that realm at all or? I haven't done that yet, but I'm <laughs> open to it. Hold no. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, the only thing I'm sitting here thinking, I have, I think, it, I think it's, um, like Melanie said, specific kind of to the geography. Mm -hmm. But I do have a house in um, Aspen that we we're working on that, um, you know, the windows are huge and it's all those beautiful trees right out the, right outside. But as far as the palette, you know, it snows there. It's cold a lot of the time, a lot of the year. And, you know, you, you put in mohair and like things that are cozy. Because even in the summer, it's, it's a lot chillier yeah. in the colors. Mm -hmm. But this these photos, there's this orange dining room that keeps showing up that's a Gracie wallpaper. That is their Fort Worth home that I did. Oh. And they are not afraid of color. And their Aspen house is like literally a, just a contemporary version of that mm -hmm. house. It's like all the same. It's like orange and green. And yeah. um, that sounds so bad, but I promise <laughs> it's going to be so good when it's done. Mm -hmm. But um, And navy and just really warm and cozy and, yeah. and cool. So... Um, it's more, I think, based on, again, the client and what they want. But, of course, like Melanie said, you know, I have a project in Tampa that's light and happy and a little more neutral and, you know, because their house is right on the water and it's mm -hmm. hot all the time and linens mm -hmm. and things like that. So um, I think, it, again, it's more the client, but it is influenced by the, the geography and the, the surrounding um, areas. Absolutely. 
Well, as we mentioned earlier, we're here with Pierre Frey and Benjamin Moore today. Um, and these powerhouse companies, you know, they're known for their really beautiful patterns, their colors and all the things like that. So I would like to know a little bit more about how these brands that you work with, including Pierre Frey and Benjamin Moore, continue to move the needle forward in design every, every year and what's new and exciting you these days with, with these big brands. Um, Melanie, do you want to start? <laughs> well, yes, I love Pierre Frey. <laughs> and they do have amazing patterns and colors. And sometimes it is fabrics that inspire us um, for a color palette to a room. And I think we did a show house um, with Flower Magazine a, a year or so ago. And it was that Pierre Frey fabric that added the punch of color uh, to the space. And so it could be as simple as a, a window treatment, but it's great when you can really find something that you love and work from that and everything falls into place. So it, it's kind of like the launching point of um, where you start. And they come out with so many th new things that, is there any tips that you have, I suppose, with how to kind of dive through all of the, the goodness that's there? Or is it really just picking and choosing and hoping for the right decision? <laughs> well, I think it's, you, you really just have to pick something. Yeah. You know, I think people just deliberate over, you know, making a decision. And um, that's, this is, the, that's the project that was just the, that little punch of bread is what we needed. And, um, but if you just select something, you can pull together a room. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. It's like the blue range we had to work with, you know, but at the end of the day, all the little things that were added made that house feel like a home to, her, to our client. And if you just choose something that you know you like, it doesn't have to be the perfect thing that you dwell on for a year. Yeah. Just pick it and then, you know, pull things together um, based on that. Meredith, how do you feel that, you know, these brands are continuing to move the needle forward? Is, is there anything that's exciting you about um, what's going on in the design world? Well, I was just going to say, every one of you need to go after this to Pierre Frey because their <laughs> showroom is so chic and cool. It is. And what I love about their brand is they have really figured out how to please everybody because it's like they're so good at the contemporary mm -hmm. and the... I mean, you'll see when you go in there exactly what I'm talking about. They've got the pattern and the color. It's very traditional. I mean, the house of Pierre Frey, I, I, Carolyn, when did it start? I mean, I don't even know, probably the 1800s or <laughs> I don't even know. Mm -hmm. But um, they've really done a good job. I mean, don't you think of like mm -hmm. just doing it all and they do it all very well in color and contemporary patterns and abstract and really traditional. So I think they've really pushed it and and have done a wonderful job. So y'all go check it out when you leave here. <laughs> David, what's exciting you these days about about the design world and, and how are these companies, you know, that you work with starting to move the needle? You know, I think it, it's maybe not a trend, but more a return to quality. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, you know, Benjamin Moore and Pierre Frey and a lot of the vendors that we work with, um, they've been around a long time for a reason. And I think clients and people in general are kind of tired of this disposable kind of culture that we've entered into. And so I think we're really seeing a respect and like value placed on um, these kind of timeless brands that really, you know, they've withstood really the test of time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I think that's what we love about working with them. And, um, you know, it's not like it's a struggle to find something beautiful at either company. So. That always Absolutely. helps too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they listen to the designers as well. You know, that's that's they hear what you want and then they they go for it. So there really is something for everyone. You should stop by the Pierre Frey showroom afterwards and check it out as well. Um, so we've spoken a lot about you know the best ways to apply color and some tips that our audience here can maybe implement into their own homes. But I want to talk a little bit about the opposite side of the spectrum. I want to know if you guys have any design don'ts as it pertains to color or if maybe there's any projects that you've had to learn the hard way that something just was not working. Meredith, does anything come to mind for you? If you're laughing over there. Yeah, well, um, okay, first of all, I brought a prop. Um, so this has been my new best friend. I was just like mm -hmm. making sure these guys knew. This is a company called Samplize, which you can get Benjamin Moore, you can put it in, they will overnight these samples, but they're like, they're big. And so you can make sure, or you can try to make sure you don't make a mistake when you pick a paint color because 
when you have a paint deck, you know, they're this big, they're like the size of your thumb, and there's a lot of margin for error, and that's a big response. And I'm, I'm sure these guys would agree, picking a paint color is so hard. It's probably one of the hardest things. And the light changes, that wall's gonna look different than this wall, and if it's by a window. Um, but I did have a little mistake, and it was with yellow, mm -hmm. um, but we painted a, a little, a tiny little cottage kitchen. Um, and I mean, I had all my done all my stuff, but when it just in reality, when it went up, it was just too intense, and we repainted it. What is that it moment like for you, where you're like, <gasps> oh, I mean, I kind of felt like I was going to throw up for a few minutes, and then I was like, <laughs> okay, I, you know, I'm only human. I'm right. doing the best I can, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they get it right the first time every <laughs> single time. <laughs> we do most of the time, but um, yeah. So you know, it's it's all about trial and error. But with paint, I cannot say enough. Just it like, what's the phrase? Uh, nail once, measure mm -hmm. measure twice, nail once. Like just uh -huh. keep, do samples, like uh -huh. big samples. And but it's important um, too that um, when you do samples, because I I find this um, happening all the time when clients will paint a color on a wall that is not white, and it's the color that they're painting on is affecting the color that they're painting. And mm -hmm. you know when I was in school in design school at uh, University of Texas um, way back when we did a color study, and so it was a whole class on taking different colors and, and layer, layering them on top of each other, and you could t put two different colors on the color green, it could be a blue or it could be a um, slightly gray blue, and they would completely change with whatever color they were put on. So it, it's kind of like the opposite ends of the color spectrum. So I always try to encourage people is just take look at color without it being next to another color because a lot of times it just it messes up with your your eye and the way you see things and you know it's it's better just to take something like this and put it outside or put it near a window but it, or on a piece of fabric but when you're putting up a color that's on a wall that's maybe khaki or not it's it's pulling out different colors so then when you go to paint the whole room it's not translating the same way you saw it. A whole new fear unlocked for me that I need to <laughs> yeah. not, not be around it's other It's fascinating. Colleagues, right? I mean, it, it, is it, fascinating. it is It's one of those things that I really stuck with me in school that I learned because y you were looking at the same color on, t on two different backgrounds and you couldn't believe it was the same color. Absolutely. And, wow. you know, it holds true to our practice today. Definitely. That's why we hire you guys and don't do it ourselves, right? <laughs> yeah. David, what about you? Do you have any color don'ts or have any horror stories as it pertains to color that you had to learn the hard way? Probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I think it, it really is about, like, testing it in the space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I think that's what's always so crazy is, you know, we've had different projects where we'll use the same color. Um, you know, the same color spec, even the finish and everything, and it will look totally, you know, totally different. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, we've never had had it where it looked so different that it had to be repainted or it looked bad. Um, but I think, you know, I think because I am so cautious or, you know, really trying to be mindful about color, um, I, you know, I like to pull it pull color from something else um, if we're using a strong color. Um, you know, if it's like, whether it's art or the fabric that we're using. Um, and, and it does take a lot of trial and error to get that color chip to translate mm -hmm. correctly um, onto the wall. You know, Definitely. Yeah, so it's, you know, I think contractors and painters, you know, hate us a lot of times because, <laughs> you know, they're like, why are we painting 12 <laughs> samples of, this, of a white? <laughs> um, you Just know, what? so, yeah, exactly, so. Um, they are different. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. yeah. Oh, so. I love it. Well, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, here in the South, and I mean, in the North as well, there's a lot of people who have second homes, and so I'm kind of curious in your guys' experiences, if you've designed houses for clients who have their primary home maybe in Atlanta or in New York, and then their second home in Cashers or Florida or up in the Hamptons or so, what is the difference you're seeing in color usage between those regions and areas that they're doing? Are you finding that maybe they're being 
more daring in their second home compared to their primary home or vice versa? Or what are you seeing with that? Meredith, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I do think clients are a little more open to like going a little, mm -hmm. a little funkier on a home that they don't live in full time. Mm -hmm. um, for sure. I think they're like, well, I, would, I, had, I had it was buttoned up or they may feel like they have to entertain their husband's whatever clients in Atlanta, but out here they can be fine and get drunk or whatever they want to do. <laughs> and so, you know, I think, I think for sure yeah. there, there is that. But I was just thinking I had a client that um, we did a, it was like a hunting ranch for them um, outside of, it was like north of Atlanta. And she said, I have um, a little board to show you that's like inspiration board. So just come over and we'll look at it. And I literally thought it was going to be like a tray mm -hmm. of that big. And I walk in the house. The music was blasting country music, like all the speakers. She had her entire dining table, and it was unbelievable. I was like, okay, I need to quit my job and just work for you because this is unbelievable. <laughs> she had like feathers. She had snakeskin boots that were turquoise. She had all these plates that had turkeys on them. She had paint swatches, like, like a ribbon from, you know, her closet. And I was just like, okay, this is unbelievable. And, and this was like her inspiration. So I took all these pictures and, you know, that was kind of the, the starting point. So, um, but again, that was not their, their main house. And she was like, let's do it. Let's like, let's I love do this. That. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. Oh, it's very mm -hmm. fun. Which is, I've had a client yeah. that all, all they wanted was blue and white. So I did their, you know, city house and their mountain house and their beach house all in navy and white. Oh my God. <laughs> so that they was a big challenge. Like. Yeah, yeah. They, make them they, look different. they couldn't divert. So um, it was more him than it was yeah. her. But, but it was just interesting to figure out how to uh, change it up and make it feel like, you know, they were appropriate for where yeah. they were. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to make sure that we leave some time for questions, but I want to just kind of end on maybe a helpful note for our audience here. Um, obviously, the topic, color, what is your advice for people who are maybe afraid to use a more bold palette in their home, and how can they do so in a sophisticated and um, way, whether that's just jumping off the board and doing it full out or tiptoeing in? Um, what can you tell them? David, do you want to start? Sure, sure. I mean, I think it's about, you know, moving into it slowly or, mm -hmm. you know, in a subtle way. You know, it's a lot of times clients that are averse to color or pattern. Um, you know, you take a small room or a powder room or, you know, a room that you're not spending a ton of time in and you kind of show them that that can be a little bit more bold. And then I think in general, they like it and start to maybe trust you a little more and it starts to creep into other areas in, in the house um, or things that, you know, accent chairs or pillows or things like that that don't feel like such a commitment mm -hmm. um, or such an investment, I think is a lot of times easier to convince people um, that maybe are a little hesitant. And, you know, usually if it turns out well, um, hopefully they'll trust you a little more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Melanie, what are your tips? Do you have anything specific that you can share with our audience here? No, I mean, it could be just something as simple as a pillow, you know, or a throw blanket. It, if you had, that's an easy way to add mm -hmm. color without a commitment. And, you know, it's really just having contrast and interest to a room, you know. Mm -hmm. Meredith, now you're big on color. You're a, a real big colorful person on the panel. Is there something, any advice that you would give to people who are a little bit more afraid of a bolder palette? I mean, they stole all my answers. Um, <laughs> so roll I, with it and have fun. Just, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like art. Um, like, yeah, like this sofa is so white, but if you threw a funky pillow on it, it would, uh -huh. it would change it mm -hmm. like that. And that's not a big investment either. So if you're nervous, um, it's a it's a less committed committed way to do it to take the leap. So. Absolutely. Well, we all know how great the purple and teal and a little bit of yellow looks on a <laughs> white play couch. So, mm -hmm. thank you guys. Is there any questions for our panelists? We've got one up here. Right. Oh, oh, hold on one second. Microphone. So sorry, I have a microphone. So we are um, just by the way, we're recording today's presentation. So I want to make sure all the questions are on the mic. Do you do all your work with a CAD program? And if so, do you show it to the client so they know what they're getting beforehand? Mm -hmm. On the computer? Mm -hmm. um, like a rendering? Yeah. I, not a rendering, but a, a CAD program where you're yeah. 
putting yeah. fabrics in and everything and yeah. so you know what the design is going to look like, do you show it to them first? I, mean, I, I do. Yes. My, our, client, our clients know. I'm sure mm -hmm. we all do. So yeah. they approve it. Know yeah. what they're getting. Mm -hmm. We hope. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I hope so. <laughs> got one up yeah. here as well, Katie. I do have to say, I so appreciate you all, and color outside of architecture is my most favorite subject. Color does so much for people, emotionally, spiritually, any which way you want to think about it, joyfully. And you can take a bold color, which I've done, and tone it down and give it a beauty and an elegance and you can use whites and neutrals and do the reverse and do the rest of the room in those colors. So therefore, it all works as a neutral. Mm -hmm. And then the pillows and the pop comes from that as well. And it's very um, uplifting. I've taken some homes of 3,000 square foot and done just three different colors that all complement one another throughout the entire home. And that's the palette. It turned out gorgeous. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Any, more Any other questions? questions? We've got one back there, Katie. Hey, how you guys doing today? Great. Right, cool. <laughs> how so, are you? Um, great, great. Foundationally, I'm a graphic designer, so but I'm always interested in ways that other designers approach process and design, especially when it comes to color. Um, I like to teach my students about you know, design, I mean, color psychology. So I'm interested to know is, um, how does color psychology influence you all's design decisions? Anyone want to start? Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not a psychologist, nor do I claim to be. Um, but I, what we've all said, I think my, my only approach is what makes you feel good and what, you know, what makes you happy and what you respond to. Um, I don't know the answer to um, the, the science behind all the color selections, but I think mm -hmm. if you feel good in an environment and comfortable, that's kind of my, my personal approach to it. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with that. I mean, there are certain colors, like I was saying earlier, yellow is a happy color and it's just something that um, just invokes a mood. But it's also all the other things that, you know, in a room, it's the textures, it's the um, amount of natural light, so there's just so many other factors that, that come into play as well. There was a panel last year on color psychology, actually, it's on YouTube that Kate did here. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you want to learn more about the psychology of color and how it kind of dives into design, then that's on the ADAC YouTube channel. You can check that out. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any other questions? Do you have a question? It's ADAC Atlanta on YouTube. Right. I just had one. Hi, y'all. Um, Years ago, I went to the Boston Design Center and saw Liz Rush, the painter, artist, and loved all of the color combinations because they were really unexpected. And then it only made sense, like a year or two later, Pierre Frey had a collection, and it's the Optimism Collection. And so it's like, oh, that is completely inspiring. Are there artists or I, something you've seen recently that is a really unexpected combination or you're like, that's amazing. I don't have the client or the place yet, but I'm watching this and I'm gonna put it somewhere. Do we have that? Hmm. That's a good Anyone? question. Um, I, don't, I don't know that I have a specific one, but I'm constantly like, I mean, my, by my bed is like magazines up here. It just mm -hmm. drives my husband crazy. And, you know, because I'm just constantly influenced by all kinds of things in different different ways. And I think one of the things about design is like keeping it unexpected and not so matchy is what's gonna make it really um, a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, is that Melissa? Yeah. Is that Melissa back there? I, mm -hmm. We'll get back to you on that. <laughs> but I think it's too, it's like go out there in the world and see things and travel and you know, don't sit in front of your computer all the time. and. Every, you know, as designers, we're tactile and we're, we're visual. So I think it's so important to be in the real world and see all these things and understand how they make you feel. Because you can't, looking at magazines even, you can't really feel a room because you're not in them. So the more you can get out and experience different things, um, 
it's gonna help you understand the color that you're around and how you respond to it. David, you have anything on that? <laughs> just what I just want to make sure we're not yeah. <laughs> said, yeah. giving you your opportunity. Any mm -hmm. other questions for our panelists? We've got one up here. Sorry. We have okay, time for one it. more. I think this is probably our last chance here. Hi, how are you? I wanted to know from the panelists, um, based on your clientele, which color combinations have been the most requested for clients who want to really um, tap into their imagination and really feel that they're part of this, they're making their home this special world that, you know, is totally, I know we talk about the real world and in film, um, when we talk about the hero's journey, we talk about that special world that is kind of separate from the real world. So what um, request have uh, many, any clients have made that for color schemes that help them to really tap into their imagination at home? Thank you. Imagination at home. Um, I think, you know, I think it's just really depends on who they are and what they do for a living. Um, creative people want more creative palettes. And so I think it's really understanding where they're, I always like to ask them, you know, about their childhood because sometimes colors come, a love for color comes from their childhood, whether it goes back to like, using crayons and um, experimenting that way or just something that resonates with them. But I think that's one point that you can always um, look back on to their background of how they grew up and what they were surrounded by that brings out their creativity of using color. Well, I think it can come, yeah, from like if they have an art collection or mm -hmm. things like that that they really love and feel inspired by or, or objects or, mm -hmm. you know, just things that they find aspirational. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Thank you all for being here, for spending your afternoon with us, also with the audience. And um, if everyone wants to join us in the Pierre Frey showroom on Suite 308, our panelists will be up there if you have additional questions, as well as our HL team and the Pierre Frey and Benjamin Moore team. So we'll see you up there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.